All right, uh, do a little prep here. Um, I took these front two windows out. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, the glue on this firewall is pretty extreme and it's, I'm not sure how thick the flange is. I'm thinking it's about an inch and a half thick or so, but it's completely packed full of glue and it's, uh, the stuff is super sticky. So I used a oscillating tool and I can, I can cut it really easy, but it just turns to like tar. So the sticky doesn't go away. So I think that's gonna be a problem when I'm trying to pull the body off of the uh, chassis. So my thoughts are, I'm gonna cut the body back here, all the way down, remove all the clips holding it to the frame. Same thing on the other side, just zip all the way across the roof, all the way across the floor. I'll probably take these out just so I can work. Cut all the way across the floor, you know, a good foot, six inches, something like that. And that really separates the front from the back. And then at that point, all I have to do is lift the back up. Um, I give off-road forklift in here, 36,000 pound off-road forklift. And that'll just, we'll just pick the body off the cab or off the ch chassis and leave the front. And then that makes the front a little more workable to where um, I can uh, cut the floor. You know, here's some of that glue. I mean, this is, it's like nasty, nasty thick. And they have it all globs so tight. This is where it separates the uh, front cowl from the rest of the body. So if I cut it back here, it gives me, uh, makes it a lot more manageable to where I can release everything underneath. And then on the underside, take all the bolts out and slowly start to pry it away without screwing up that firewall too bad. Um, and then uh, let's see what else. So I uh, started going through the wiring here. Um, I'm gonna keep a lot of these switches. These are cool switches. And uh, all the um, uh, uh, breakers, uh, all the circuit breakers I'd like to keep. Um, I could use those for something down the road, I'm sure. So came down here, um, I got all traced back. So I got the uh, retarder lights disconnected. Got them, they, everything needs to be on this side of the firewall to be able to separate everything. So I'm um, not sure what this one is. Can't find wiring diagrams online for this bus because it's too old. Um, and then yesterday, it's kind of funny, I had this thing parked, had this thing parked in front of the garage, mama's car's in there. And I uh, uh, started cutting or going through some wiring here to try to figure out how all this was tied together. And at one point I pulled something apart and the bus wouldn't start. And I'm thinking, oh shit, how, uh, how am I gonna, how am I gonna move this bus with uh, uh, with no power? I mean, I'm not gonna be able to steer this stupid thing. So um, screwed around with that a little bit and figured out one of the wires just had broke off the terminal for the starter. Uh, so tracing that back, I knew I needed to figure out what wires were the starter in here or the ignition switch or whatever and figure out what it takes to get that running. So ended up tracing it all back and it led to these two wires right here. Um, so, uh, one goes to one side, one goes to the other, and it just has these two connectors. This is it right here. So these two connectors basically connected to these two wires and would allow the truck to start. So kind of cool, the manufacturer, of course, they drive these things around without the bodies on them. So they use this um, as their jumper. And now you can get the truck to start without, uh, truck to start without any power over here. So, so pretty easy. Um, Everything is disconnected electrically, except for, I gotta take, take apart this, uh, I think this is a positive. This looks like a big, or maybe it's a ground. I don't know, it looks like a chassis ground maybe. I'll have to test that, see what that is. So disconnect this and then the two radiator lines. And basically at that point, all the lighting and everything, fan controls, all of that is completely separate from uh, the body to the uh, chassis cab. So makes it kind of easy. Um, and then I'm going to keep a few of the things, uh, you know, we talked about the, uh, the, the um, first aid kits. I'm going to keep those fire extinguishers. You can never have enough of those. Um, so I'm just going to keep like the fan is going to be cool. I'll put that in the old Ford. Uh, and then I kept this, this has the, uh, um, body information. I don't know that I'm really going to need that once I get rid of the body because the chassis has its own, um, identification placard on it. Um, but I thought maybe I needed, I would need this for trying to figure out the door alarms or whatever. Um, additionally, having that all disconnected up there and having that starter relay jumped is, uh, the back door locks don't work anymore. 
the buzzers or the interlock. So this was locked. I just started the truck. So now, you know, if anybody needs to, anybody needs to bypass those, that's the quick and easy way to do it. Just find those two gray wires that have a female and a male end on them, put them together and your interlock is completely disconnected. I know there's a couple of, uh, couple of videos I've seen that have them, you know, grounding off a cylinder or something like that. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I think you just swap, get those two wires swapped over and you're golden. And doing that doesn't change anything up here. This, uh, all the panel and everything still has its own power wires going to it and whatnot. Um, all that does is just move it from body side to that side over there. So that makes it nice and easy. It keeps the body side is where all the interlock devices and everything are tied in. So that gets rid of all that. So nice and easy. Uh, today, um, I've, I've kind of promised myself I'm going to do something to this thing every day. I don't care if it's just staring at the wiring and figuring out what my plan is for it, uh, which within about 15 minutes to this morning I had done, which is kind of cool. Uh, you know, getting a plan for taking the body off, whatever. So today I want to uh, get these rails down because when I start cutting the bus uh, into pieces, once it's on the ground, these are going to be in the way. So I think the only way these come out is through that back door. So I'll pull these rails out. Um, that way they're not holding the, holding the roof structure together. So once I start cutting, it can just fall out. Uh, so I'll get these rails out today. Um, that way that's ready to go. And I've got a couple things I need to knock out, but maybe this afternoon I might even cut, uh, might even cut this section out in the front. We'll see. So I'm hoping maybe next weekend I can get the forklift up here and uh, get this body lifted off of this thing and set on the ground. And then I can start cutting the body up and uh, getting it tossed aside so that way I can haul it off the scrap. And that's where we're at.